Hello and welcome to Bite Size Tech. I'm your host, Rogue, and today a word from our sponsor, Crypto.com, home of the Visa card that pays up to 8% in rewards and the app that pays you up to 14% annually on your crypto stake. Join more than 10 million users on the world's fastest growing crypto app as you trade with confidence on the world's fastest and most secure crypto exchange. Tech has more information and a special sign up offer at the end of this video. What's his name? <laughs> Minos. Minos. I was waiting for it. <laughs> I do that every time. What's I have name? the memory of a of a of a of a of a mouse. Except your long term memory with PC stuff. Let me tell you about my Gateway Two Thousand. <laughs> Minos comes in with a question about a wow CPU upgrade, and he wants to know if or what really would be a WoW upgrade for a Ryzen 7 1700 CPU. So the AMD Zen 1, what would be WoW? Well, that's a great question because first of all, I think a lot of people have CPUs similar to that, Ryzen 7 1700 or 1700X or similar. And this same logic would also apply to people with a Ryzen 5 1600 because it's basically the same chip but with just two fewer cores. And so somebody wanting to upgrade would have a similar question. Yep. The Ryzen 7 1700 was the most important CPU launch in 10 years when it came out in March of 2017. Amazing, eight cores for $329. Holy smokes, take that Intel and thank you AMD because it really changed the industry overnight. It was awesome. Cause Intel was like $500. For eight cores? Yeah. No, Intel was $1,000 for eight cores. Yeah. That's true. They were $1,000 for the i for the i7 6900X was $1,000 for eight cores. They wanted $1,800 for 10 cores. They did. Yeah. So thank you, AMD. The thing is, the Ryzen 7 1700 was great. I built one when it came out. I used it as my video editing machine and capture we machine did. for a while. But if you use one today, it's um, <laughs> lacking. It doesn't have the wow experience. It's fine, it works, it beats the snot out of Bulldozer, the FX 8300 series. Or this one. But yeah, I mean, it crushes that. But compared to modern chips, it definitely is lacking in both uh, system snappiness, system responsiveness, and overall performance. It is definitely worth upgrading if you're looking for a better overall computer experience. The question is, what do you upgrade to? Well, AMD promised the whole AM4 is going to last four years. You'll be able to upgrade oh. several generations. And so he probably has a very lovely X370 motherboard that he purchased back in 2017 to put his Ryzen 7 1700 yeah. on because he could upgrade to a Zen 2 or Zen 3 chip on his existing board and all would be right as rain. Well, maybe. Possibly. It depends. Yeah. <laughs> We have done enough of those upgrades that I'm just gonna give you a blanket piece of advice. Don't bother. If you're gonna upgrade that CPU, upgrade your board. You need a new motherboard. The 300 series motherboards on Zen 2 and Zen 3 chips, especially the Zen 3 chips, are iffy as heck. Now the 400 series aren't as bad, and if by chance he didn't say, if by some weird chance he has his Ryzen 7 1700 on an X470, you know, I'm, I'm, I still don't like that plan, but I am much more okay with it. The 470s were much better than the 370s. So I'm a little more wishy-washy on the advice when it comes to putting a Zen 2 or a Zen 3 chip on the 400 series. However, if you have a 300, B350 or X370, run, do not walk, buy a new motherboard. Do not put a new chip on that board. They just... We okay. have done it on multiple machines. You can, you can, and then you can come back and tell us how horrible it was. Yeah, it's if you get lucky with it, then you know go buy a lotto ticket or something because it's it's a very hit and miss experience. Uh, as far as what CPU would be a wow upgrade, frankly, any of the modern chips would be a wow upgrade. A Ryzen five. I know I'm about to say this. What? A Ryzen five fifty six hundred X six core twelve thread chip would be a WoW upgrade. I don't recommend it. No. But it would in fact be a WoW upgrade. It's $300 for six cores. 
He paid $300 for eight cores back then. He did. But in fairness, in all respects, a Ryzen 5 5600X will just demolish and crush a 1700. It, it, it really will. What should he buy? A Ryzen 9 5900X, if you can find one for 550. I know it's a lot of money. It's more than you originally paid for your 1700. But if you want an impressive upgrade that gets you more cores, faster cores, and a mind-blowing future experience that's gonna last you for the next three to five years with epic, amazing performance. Frankly, I think the Ryzen 9 5900X is the go-to chip. If you can get the right deal on it, a Ryzen 7 5800X may not be bad. I don't like it at launch price. At the $450 price, I don't like it, but recently it's been cheaper. It's yeah. been under 400. And let's say, for example, he can find a deal on it for 350. I've never disliked the chip. I just disliked the 450 launch price. If the if the Ryzen 7 5800X is 350, I suddenly like the chip. There's no bad products, just bad prices. Right. At that at 350, now I'm a supporter. Now I'm on board. Now I'm interested because it's a great chip and it's very snappy and very fast. Let me offer you another alternative. Intel exists, and Intel has gotten up off their butt and released some really good stuff. For under $300, in fact, sometimes for under $250, you can get an i7-10700 or 10700F. Not a K chip, but it doesn't matter because it will do 4.6 gigahertz on all, four, all eight cores and 16 threads. It's, it's well, faster than a Zen 2, but not as fast as a Zen 3. It's right in between. Well, that'll beat his 3.9 gigahertz. It'll all, well, it's not just the gigahertz. But it's the per core performance. Well, yeah. The instructions per clock cycle of the yep. Intel chip demolishes the 1700. Correct. So if he goes to an i7-10700 for $250 and puts it on a $100-ish motherboard for about 350, maybe 375, he can, he can get 4.6 gigahertz. I can tell you from experience, a four heat pipe direct contact cooler such as the Hyper 212 Evo or Hyper 212 Black will cool that chip. It's a 65 watt TDP chip, although it runs more than that when you're at 4.6 on a semi-decent motherboard. Stick 32 gigs of RAM in there because we are in the era of 32 gigs. And $350 to $400 for the board and chip, plus another $150 for 32 gigs of RAM. For $500, you will have a machine that will give you that wow, wow experience. Booting up and installing Windows, running Windows updates, installing your games, launching your games and programs, multitasking and task switching yep. on a 10700 Ooh. versus a 1700 is a noticeable difference that you will not need to run a benchmark to see. If you were to put them side by side and be clicking and dragging and doing stuff, it would be obvious and apparent how much difference the performance really is. Do you have anything that you want to add to all that? I used a Ryzen 7 1700. It was fine. It was fine. Until um. you went to... <laughs> but here's the funny thing. It's not the Ryzen that's the problem. It's the 1700 because yeah. you also used a Ryzen 7 3700X. How much better was the 3700X oh. versus the 1700? Much better. Much Noticeable. No, yes. Awesome. Yes, hands down, I would, yes. So that's an option. Yep. And depending on his board, maybe he wants to upgrade to that. I mean, if he does have a 400 series board, you could drop a 3700X in and it would be a nice one. And then he wouldn't have to change everything. Exactly. It, it, how much work do you want to do to change it out? As always, the answer is it depends. depends. How many of you have a Visa card that pays you up to 8% on every purchase? Crypto.com offers an amazing deal on their Visa card with cashback that is an unbeatable deal. No annual fee, no sign-up fee, no credit checks, no interest payments. It works just like a prepaid debit card, allowing you to spend your money anywhere Visa is accepted. But wait, there's more. Get your Spotify, Netflix, and Amazon Prime subscriptions 100% paid for by Crypto.com. You heard me right. Use your new crypto visa card to pay for your subscriptions and get 100% back in rewards. Earning 8% on your new visa card is awesome, but how would you like to earn up to 14% interest on your crypto holdings? If you're holding crypto for investment, inflation protection, or price speculation, it can be frustrating to feel like your money is just parked. Yes, you really can earn up to 14% annual interest on your crypto paid weekly directly to your account to spend however you like.
The interest is paid in the same token that you're holding. So if you have Bitcoin staked, you are in Bitcoin. If you have Ethereum staked, you are in Ethereum, and so on. Flexible terms are offered, including zero lock, so you can withdraw your crypto anytime you like without restrictions, or you can hold for one or three month terms for a higher rate of return. Of course, you can buy, sell, and exchange 100 plus cryptocurrencies with 20 plus fiat currencies using bank transfers or your credit and debit card at true cost. Crypto.com is first and foremost a crypto exchange. There is so much more to explore, I have barely scratched the surface. DeFi features including a private wallet with full control of your private keys, margin and derivatives trading options for advanced traders, crypto credit allows you to borrow against your holdings with no deadlines or credit checks, crypto NFTs allows you to explore the new world of non-fungible tokens, crypto pay allows you to pay any merchant with crypto and you earn up to 10% back in rewards, and that's not even everything they have to offer. If you're looking for the place to be in crypto, use our link in the video description below to sign up today, you'll get a $25 crypto sign up bonus and 30 days of 0% transaction fees on credit and debit card purchases of crypto. It supports the channel and it gets you a great offer to get started in the world of crypto.